Jupiter, vast, mysterious, the largest planet in the solar system. Made almost entirely of gas, this violent world of 400 mile an hour winds and storms twice the size of Earth may also be the blueprint for how planets are formed. And on one of Jupiter's four largest moons may lie the answer to the most important question of all. Beneath these vast ice sheets, mankind could finally discover if alien life exists. Cutting edge space missions are unlocking the secrets of this enigmatic giant, Jupiter. In the last 50 years, space missions have revealed worlds we never could have imagined. From the mountains of Mars to the methane lakes of Saturn. Yet one planet captures our imagination more than any other. The greatest of them all, Jupiter. Most of what we know about Jupiter comes from one mission Galileo, launched aboard the space shuttle Atlantis in 1989. Each new discovery it makes deepens our understanding of Jupiter and its moons. It may also uncover evidence of how the solar system itself was formed. Eleven times bigger than the Earth, yet probably without a solid surface, Jupiter is a ball of gas and liquid 90,000 miles across. With lightning superbolts a thousand times more powerful than the strongest strikes on Earth. And a ring system like Saturn's, but too faint for our telescopes to see. The Great Red Spot, a single vast storm with 250 mile an hour winds. So huge, it could swallow the Earth three times over. 63 moons orbit this giant. Galileo will study four of them, Io, Europa, Ganymede, and Callisto. Each of which would be a, a beautiful target for a space mission in and of itself. Scientists expect dead and lifeless worlds 500 million miles from the sun. Io, Jupiter's closest moon, is slightly larger than Earth's own moon. But Io is far from lifeless. Huge plumes of sulfur dioxide reach hundreds of miles into space. Very peculiar surface with reds and yellows, someone nicknamed it the pizza moon. Ganymede, the largest moon, is a world of scars and frozen slush. And Europa, most mysterious of all. Its icy surface may hide a liquid ocean below. Where there's water, there could be life. A new generation of probes are set to explore the mysteries of the Jovian system. Juno, Europa Explorer, and the underwater probe, Endurance. Three missions, one goal, to at last reveal the secrets of these alien worlds. Before Galileo, previous missions could only look from afar. In the 1970s and early 80s, Pioneer and Voyager gave us tantalizing glimpses of Jupiter and its moons. But they raised more questions than they answered. How did Jupiter form? What powers its vast storms? And why are its moons so geologically active? Before these questions can be answered, the team have to overcome a simple problem. Galileo is unable to carry enough fuel to reach its destination. NASA engineers need another way to get to Jupiter. And they came up with a brilliant solution. We wouldn't go to Jupiter at all. We'd start by going to Venus. By flying close to Venus, and then Earth, using a gravitational slingshot method, Galileo steals some energy from the planets 
to accelerate itself toward its final destination, Jupiter. When Galileo arrives after a journey of six years, a small subprobe will detach and plunge into the depths of Jupiter's atmosphere. It will have less than an hour to analyze its surroundings before being crushed by the extreme pressure. Everyone expects Galileo to beam back extraordinary information. As the spacecraft nears the end of its journey, it coincides with a massive comet on a collision course with Jupiter. Galileo is in an ideal position to watch. It could find clues to one of the most important questions about Jupiter's history. How was it made? Up until now, scientists believe that Jupiter is made from the leftovers from the birth of the Sun, a primordial planet frozen in time. If so, the Sun and Jupiter will have very similar chemical compositions. The comet's impact will stir up chemicals from below the surface, enabling the team to analyze them and see if the theory holds true. They are about to get more than they bargained for. I just couldn't believe that we were going to get a chance to see one body in the solar system smash into another one. We had an up-close and personal view of this unique event. The comet's name is Shoemaker-Levy 9, or SL9. David Levy is part of the team that first discovers it. This was going to be the first time that a comet collided with a planet, the first time in recorded history. And we had no idea what we were going to learn from it. The day arrives. On mountaintops and in space, more telescopes are trained on the same part of the sky than ever before. Some scientists believe Jupiter's thick atmosphere will simply swallow the comet without a trace. Others hope the impact will dredge up matter from deep inside the planet, giving us vital clues to its composition. We were talking about the largest, biggest planet in the solar system being hit by a tiny comet. Most scientists thought it would be a fizzle. Boy, were we lucky. As the comet approaches, Jupiter's massive gravity tears it to pieces. Now, 20 separate fragments will strike the planet, some a mile or more across. Astronomers across the globe are about to witness something amazing. Wow. Look. Oh, yeah, that's it. Oh, one by one, the fragments hit. The largest releases as much energy as 300 million atomic bombs. A fireball shoots 2,000 miles above the top of Jupiter's clouds. Each fragment produces a separate impact cloud, visible as dark black bruises in Jupiter's southern hemisphere. They're the size of the Earth. The first thing we saw with each impact was either the plume of dust and gas uh, as seen by either Galileo or the Hubble Space Telescope. The next thing we saw was the formation of the large jet black cloud all over Jupiter's southern hemisphere. But the real surprise doesn't come from the clouds. It comes from the shock waves the impacts send through the upper atmosphere. There's only one explanation, and to astronomers, it's a revelation. When uh, Shoemaker-Levy 9 crashed into Jupiter, uh, it's sort of like a rock going into a pool. It, it sent out waves, and the speed of the waves depends on the amount of water in the atmosphere. And uh, the speed was faster than we thought, and, and so we inferred that there was more water than we had expected. Uh, you can sort of see it here, just... Well, you, you can see the ripples spreading out. Uh, and it was the speed at which the circles grew uh, that told us there was more water than we expected. The discovery is a surprise. It means that the composition of Jupiter is different from the Sun. It threatens to overturn everything scientists think they know about Jupiter's formation. A new theory is needed. In 17 months, Galileo will arrive and analyze Jupiter's chemistry firsthand. Only then can the team solve the mystery.
One year after the comet SL9 strikes Jupiter, Galileo is on its final approach. There's a lot at stake. Scientists now know Jupiter may have 10 times more water than previously thought. If so, they may need to find a whole new explanation for how this strange world formed. Galileo's first task will be to directly measure the chemistry of Jupiter's atmosphere, including the amount of water. Galileo will release a small probe into Jupiter's clouds. The probe will also measure the wind speeds and temperatures at different depths to try and explain why the weather is so violent, as well as answering the big question, is Jupiter a long-lost cousin of the Sun or something else entirely? As the probe dives into Jupiter's atmosphere, scientists are convinced they'll find the layer of water vapor the comet revealed, giving vital clues to the planet's creation. And I even announced a prediction at a scientific meeting uh, offering to bet anyone in the audience uh, $10 that uh, the probe would find uh, more than a certain amount of water. But instead of water, the probe drifts through thin, wispy gases it has flown into a downdraft, a dry gap in the clouds. Where is the water they were expecting to find? Jupiter must have both dry areas and wet spots. It's not what they expect. What they discovered was that Jupiter has some long-term weather patterns, spots that move around that they didn't really realize were there before. The Galileo team holds their breath. The probe dives deeper but still there is almost no evidence of water. Less than an hour of data is about to trigger a revolution in our understanding of how the solar system formed. The probe does detect a high proportion of heavier elements like argon, krypton, carbon and nitrogen. It finds levels two to three times higher than found in the sun. These elements only condense at extremely low temperatures, lower than the temperature found at Jupiter's present position. We learned that it, uh, uh, the atmosphere of Jupiter has chemical constituents that came in with very cold material from the outer solar system. For astronomers, the discovery is a bombshell. The presence of these elements means Jupiter must have formed in a different way than the Sun. This little probe in one felt swoop showed us that all of our ideas of how planets were formed were wrong. We didn't understand how the planets were made and we didn't understand the early solar system. The small probe's discoveries shocked the scientific community. Could the giant planet have formed further out in the solar system where it's colder then migrated into its current position? Or did comets or asteroids bring the heavy elements and water to it? After 58 minutes, and before the answers become clear, the probe falls silent, burning up in Jupiter's inner atmosphere. The probe has given scientists some remarkable insights into Jupiter, its atmosphere, and how it formed. But the big question goes unanswered. In 2011, a new mission, Juno, will attempt to find the answer. It will fly closer to Jupiter and gather more information than ever before. When Galileo's small probe plunged through Jupiter's atmosphere, it hit a dry spot. Just how much water Jupiter holds is still a mystery. Juno will take a different approach. Using the latest microwave technology, a radiometer, it will scan for water around the entire planet. Scientists hope that finding the missing data will finally solve the mystery of how Jupiter was formed. What we're really after with Juno is the ingredients. From the ingredients of Jupiter, we're going to figure out the recipe. And that's what's going to tell us how planets are made. With the probe having completed its work, it's now time for Galileo. 130,000 miles above Jupiter to turn its attention to another long-standing